Welcome to day two of the art and science of drawing. On the first session, what we talked about was the importance of learning to draw lightly. And the reason is because every drawing you're going to do is going to start off with these incredibly light lines. Today, what we're going to talk about is what to draw using these light lines. Most people are familiar with the idea of primary colors, that by mixing together red, blue, and yellow, you can create any color imaginable. However, most people are not familiar with the idea that form works the exact same way. All form, no matter how complex, distills down to a few basic shapes. And by understanding how to draw these shapes, you can draw anything you want to. The basic shapes we're going to talk about today are circles and ovals. Let's take a look at a drawing by Rembrandt. It's easy to get caught up in all of the beautiful line work, contours, and texture of this drawing, but before Rembrandt thought of any of that, he is more likely to have thought about this in terms of shapes. What good artists tend to do is translate complex form into basic, drawable shapes. Although the forms of the elephant are made up of a number of different shapes, circles and ovals play a large role in the construction of the form. In addition to the circles and ovals you see overlaid here, there are many smaller ones, but this gives you an idea of how Rembrandt was thinking about the elephant and the big shapes that he used to construct it. Although it's rare to find drawings that rely exclusively on circles and ovals, some come pretty close. The overlay here clearly demonstrates how reliant the artist is on using these basic forms. All of the contour, shading, and details of this drawing really only make sense in relationship to the larger circles and ovals. Circles have a reputation for being notoriously difficult to draw, but I'm going to teach you some strategies today that are going to make this much easier. Many beginning drawing students try to draw a circle by starting off at the top and holding onto their pencil tightly and slowly making their way around with the hope that when they get back to the beginning, it will be a circle. This is the hardest way to draw a circle. What I'm going to teach you to do today is to use your shoulder as a compass in order to make the motion of a circle. I'm going to ask you to follow along with me for the next few minutes. What I'd like you to do is pick up a pencil and hold your arm straight out like this. Next, what I'd like you to do is make the motion of a circle in the air in front of you. Now, I want you to pay very close attention to the speed. You don't want to be out of control fast, but you don't want to go really slowly either. This method of circle drawing only works if you get up a good amount of momentum. Watch the speed that my pencil is going. Now, the next thing I'd like you to notice is when you watch the tip of your pencil, you'll note that you can actually tell what shape is going to come out of the pencil even while you're making this motion in the air. For example, if I'm making this motion, you can tell that it's not going to be a circle, it's going to be an oval. So when you're making the motion of a circle, again, you should be able to get a sense of when it gets to a point of circularity. Every time I'm going to draw a circle, you're going to see me make the motion of a circle on the page, just pantomiming it. And when I see that it's a very circular and in the right size, the right place that I want it, I'm not going to stop this motion, I'm simply going to tip the pencil down and go around not only once, but go around multiple times. And what you're going to notice is that each individual pass will not be a perfect circle. In fact, each individual pass will be a little ovular, but by making multiple light passes, these lines are going to coalesce into a very workable circle. Now, one of the things I'd like to remind you of before we start practicing circles today is we are still using our very, very light lines. You now it's very normal when people start trying to draw something with their lines instead of just scribbling lightly that they get darker. And I want you to pay attention to this because now we're essentially practicing two things at once. We're practicing circle drawing, but I still want you to use these very, very light lines. In fact, everything we're gonna be drawing for the next couple of sessions, we're going to draw very, very lightly. So again, practice your circles, but practice them as lightly as you possibly can. 
Here's a demonstration of the technique we just discussed. I'm gonna make the motion of a circle. Once I'm ready, I'm gonna tip the pencil down and go around multiple times. It's the multiple passes around the circle that make this strategy work. No individual pass is a perfect circle, but you can see that they coalesce to form a pretty workable circle. Let me demonstrate this again. I'm gonna make the motion of a circle. Once I see the circle is in the right size at the right place, I'm not gonna stop this motion. I'm simply going to tip the pencil down and go around not just once, but go around multiple times. I'll demonstrate this a few more times, and I want you to take note of a couple of things while you're watching. The first, again, is the speed of my hand. It is not moving slowly. This only works if you get up a critical momentum. The second thing is how lightly I'm drawing. We're building off what we talked about in the previous session. So not only are we drawing circles here, but this is also practicing light lines. Now, depending on your relationship to your drawing surface, it is okay to bend at the elbow a little bit, especially if you're working with a sketch pad or something that's very close to you. Remember, there is no one right way to do this. And one of the most important things you're going to be doing while learning to draw is figuring out what works for you. Oval drawing is remarkably similar to circle drawing. Just like you did while drawing circles, you're going to start off oval drawing by making the motion of an oval on the page. And just like circle drawing, once you see the oval is at the size and placement you want, you don't want to stop the motion, you want to keep moving your hand and just tip the pencil down. Make sure you go around multiple times, not just once. Circles don't have any directionality to them, but ovals do. Once you get comfortable drawing ovals horizontally, you can try them vertically. And diagonally. You want to get comfortable drawing ovals at any angle. All of the ovals I've drawn so far have been at the same size but you can change the size of the ovals. Here's one that's much smaller. Or you can make them much larger. But the important thing is that you're comfortable drawing ovals at multiple sizes and angles. The other essential thing to learn about ovals is that they can be more open or more closed. An oval that is more open is closer to a circle. An oval that is more closed is closer to a line. And of course, you can have a wide range of ovals in between. Now just watch for a moment as I demonstrate drawing a number of different ovals that are at different angles, different levels of opened and closed, and different sizes. And again, pay attention to the speed of my hand and how it's moving. As you progress in your drawing education, you're going to learn to use circles and ovals in numerous different ways. But the most important part at the beginning is to recognize them and to get comfortable drawing them. So we talked earlier about the artist translating form into basic shapes, and this needs to become a lifestyle. One of the best ways to train your brain to recognize circles and ovals in drawing is to scan your environment and recognize how many different circles and ovals you see in your everyday life. Just like drawing lightly needs to become your default reaction to a pencil in your hand, your default mindset needs to be one of looking around and translating everything you see into some kind of basic shape. Now today we just focused on circles and ovals, but as we progress through the drawing process, you're going to learn other shapes. And this practice of translating everything into basic shapes is one of the first and most important steps to being able to draw them. 
So before I give you your assignment today, I want to give you a few thoughts on practice. When I was learning how to draw circles and ovals, my instructor told me that I needed to fill 10 pages front and back with circles and ovals every morning for a year. And although I'm sure I skipped a few days, I really tried to take the spirit of this assignment to heart. And it really speaks to how much practice this actually takes. I often have students coming into the studio who, after drawing three or four circles, get frustrated. And it's important to remind them, as I'm reminding you, that this is a skill that requires a lot of practice. You are going to draw hundreds of circles and ovals before you get comfortable with it. Remember, an intellectual understanding of what we're talking about does not always translate into a skill. To get the skill of drawing a circle, even though it's an easy concept to understand, requires a lot of practice. So here's your assignment today. I'm going to ask you to draw 100 circles and 100 ovals. They should be varied in shape, size, and their level of openness and closeness. For this assignment, you should just be using, again, basic newsprint, nothing precious, because you're gonna go through a lot of these. At the beginning, it's much more important just to get used to what it feels like to draw in this way. And again, this is a great way to practice your light lines and to instill this idea of longer, more fluid strokes when you're drawing. Again, the circles don't happen slowly. They happen with a good amount of momentum and fluidity. And finally, as you're practicing, try not to evaluate how good each circle is every time you draw it. What we're really trying to do is build muscle memory. Your circles will improve over time as long as you're practicing. But if you get to the 20th one and they're not becoming perfect circles yet, don't worry about it. What you really want to do is just get into this mindset and get into this habit of doing the same things over and over and over again. One of the things that masters have in common is they never tire of re-engaging the fundamentals. And this is about as fundamental as it gets. Circular perfection is not the aim of this assignment. In fact, if you need a perfect circle, we have stencils, we have compasses, we have plenty of other ways to get a perfect circle. What we wanna do is just get comfortable drawing workable and usable circles and ovals. There's an old story that there's only been one draftsman who's ever been able to draw a perfect circle freehand on command. And that's how he got the nickname, the Divine Raphael. The reason I tell you this story is so that you can let go of the expectation that you're going to be making perfect circles, certainly at the beginning. In fact, the vast majority of the best drawers cannot make perfect circles. But with practice, we can all make very, very usable circles. Happy practicing, and I will see you at the next session.